in the land of the glittering wood moss. I have always known that Scots pine is good for building houses and ships, but that's all I thought they were good for. Then, one day, whilst walking in Glengushkin, I tripped over an outstretched tree root, dislodged a catch on the amulet that I wore around my neck, and some of the pine pollen that I carried within it flew up into the air, tickled my nostrils, and I sneezed an almighty sneeze. The next thing I knew, things began to feel a little dreamy, and I could hear the deep resonating voice of the gnarled old pine, Otach Nam Yuash. It is to the future that we must look, and it is in the future that we must put our trust, he said. But to see the needs of the future, we must first understand our past. And so, in this spirit, And before we speak some more, I need for you to... And then I could swear that the old tree gently swung one of its low-slung branches in my direction. It knocked me off my feet, dislodged more pine pollen from my amulet. Again, I sneezed an almighty sneeze. And then things began to feel more than a little dreamy. Something very strange was going on and I wasn't sure where or when I was. A pair of golden eagles, circling overhead, swooped down towards me, swept me off my feet, and I was flying. Down close by the canopy one minute, soaring high above it the next, we flew for miles and miles and miles. We saw both coasts and many a hill and glen betwixt and between. It was breathtakingly beautiful. The forest was so vast and looked so incredibly diverse that I was sure that there were plants and animals here that no longer existed in our time. Then I saw some of them. Down by the river I saw brown bear fishing for salmon. High on the hill I saw lynx hunting roe deer just below the crags. And then finally I saw a pack of wolves in Glenwishkin, resting from their day's activities. And a lone wolf, further up the hill, howled at the moon. The eagles took me out for three trips, each of them over the same route, but each of them at a different point in time. The first trip when the woodland was at its most extensive, was the most fantastic. The second trip showed a change in the extent of wooded land, but there were still large areas of intact woodland, and flying over it was still wonderful. By the time of the third trip, however, things were very different. The wooded land, a tiny fraction of what it had been, fragmented and degraded. When we landed, I heard the deep, resonating voice of the gnarled old pine Botach As you have seen, the landscape has changed dramatically these last few thousand years. And now what is left of the original forest, beautiful though it is, is vulnerable to further change. Things will continue to change, of course, but how things change, in part, will depend on you and all those who come after you. There was a moment's silence, broken by the thunderous sound of a capercaillie leaving its sleeping tree to fly. Now, cherish that moment, he implored me, for that's a sight you don't see every day. Then he showed me rare plants like twin flower, with its pairs of delicate pale pink and white bell-like flowers. He told me to cherish them, as we should also cherish the crested tit, who excavates nests in standing dead pine trees and lines them with glittering wood moss. He urged me to protect the Scottish crossbill, whose crossed bills allow them to pry open the tight scales of pine cones, then eat the seed contained within them, and who live only 
in the pine woods of Scotland. After my encounter with Botach Nam Guash, everything was different. Everything was, of course, just as it was before that encounter. But everything was different. I understood now that the old pine story was his story, but it was also my story. For our lives are now, as they have always been, intimately connected. His story, my story, is indeed our and your story. How precious, yet how fragile is life in these remnants of the Caledonian forest. Surely they must be given a chance to persist, to evolve and to expand, and the woods that have been degraded must surely be restored. So I pass on the story of Botach and Anguash to you, for you to pass on and trust that between us we'll find a way to ensure that his story, our story, continues. <laughs>